Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Brown here. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about the concept of magical realism. Now by the end of this video, you should have a pretty good understanding of the definition of this particular literary genre. Magical realism is both a literary genre and an artistic movement. It actually is credited back to a German art critic from 1925 named Franz Rowe, uh, but it's most um, frequently known for its application to literature and particularly through Latin American authors. So it's kind of a unique format for Hispanic literature. Now, magical realism is really kind of cool because you have this certain ordinary story and then all of a sudden something happens that's really out of the realm of what you would expect to happen in the realistic physical world. So you have this combination of kind of a physical reality, but then the psychological fantasy uh, coming into conflict. So there's elements of dreams and elements of fiction, and science fiction, elements of fantasy that get mixed up with what otherwise seems to be a perfectly ordinary setting and ordinary characters and story. One of the really cool things about magical realistic stories is that the characters themselves don't seem to have any reaction to the fact that these crazy things are happening. The extraordinary becomes the ordinary. For example, there's a very poor couple who look outside one day and there's a very old man outside and this old man just happens to have really enormous wings and they seem to kind of take this in stride that he has these wings. Or another character that lays down to take a nap and then her sister comes in and sees the original character wrapped in all of the bed sheets and ascending up to heaven and the sister's reaction is sort of huh well that's too bad it's and she's particularly upset because the first character took the sheets with her so the character who comes in is most upset about missing her bed sheets and not at all surprised that someone has flown out of the bed up to heaven so the concept of reality becomes very fluid in these stories and the characters themselves seem to accept the magical as realistic Now, magical realism is different from a straight-up fantasy story. For those of you who are familiar with things like Harry Potter or Narnia or Middle Earth, those stories make no claims to being the real world. We know that those are fantasies. But it stretches the definition of realism and realty. So not even so much that the characters have this belief in magic or magical situations, but almost a lack of belief or a lack of disbelief. This is their ordinary world. It's also different from science fiction. Straight up science fiction tries to show um, what the world would be like if we actually had certain scientific advances and things that took place. So that's still grounded in reality. But magical realism sets these magical events into contemporary or even older uh, realistic context. So it's a matter of not that we've advanced in science so that these things seem normal, but that we're right where we are now or where we used to be with these crazy magical things happening. Some of the things that you'll see in a typical example of a story that's been written in this style of magical realism is this juxtaposition of these opposite elements. Is a character dreaming or they awake? Is this a story about life or a story about death? The, the conflict between what's civilized and what's wild. You'll also see hyperbole. Things are, ordinary things are exaggerated to the point where they become magical. A drowned man washes up on a beach and it just so happens that he's a giant. He's this huge, like, like a Jack and the Beanstalk type giant. But no one seems particularly surprised at this. And the characters often have this kind of childlike look at the familiar world around them. They get very interested in these ordinary mundane objects. And this really engages the reader into text. It kind of mirrors our world and forces us to question what do we really believe is real or not. It's interesting that this format has been claimed by so many Hispanic authors, and it may be connected to some of the things that are unique to Latin America. If you think about the landscape that you find in Central and South America, you have this vast, mysterious terrain, these huge uh, swing from the snow-capped mountains to Amazon jungles, and then you have the native influence from the original settlers of this area. We have this blend of the um, native Indian culture with the mystical ideas and then the colonization and the juxtaposition of Christianity on top of that. So you have this really cool mix of cultures and styles that uh, really seem to lend itself to this type of genre.
Some of the most famous authors from this category include Gabriel Garcia Marquez, and we'll be reading at least two of his short stories. Um, he's most famous for winning the Nobel Prize for 100 Years of Solitude, which is one of his novels. A few of his uh, books have even been turned into movies. You may have heard of Love in the Time of the Cholera, for example. Laura Escobar, who's written like Water for Chocolate, also um, a book that was converted to film. Isabella Allende, uh, House of the Spirits is her most famous novel, and Rudolf Anaya, who wrote Bless Me Ultima. And these and other authors that we may touch on um, in, in over class time here uh, constitute some of the Hispanic authors that use this magical realism genre.